the believer's prayer. But the apostles were not yet satisfied. They desired Jesus to give them a model prayer, which they could teach the new disciples. After listening to this discourse on prayer, James Zebedee said, Very good, Master, but we do not desire a form of prayer for ourselves so much as for the new, newer believers who so frequently beseech us. Teach us how acceptable to be to pray to the Father in heaven. When James had finished speaking, Jesus said, If then you still desire such a prayer, I would present the one which I taught my brothers and sisters in Nazareth. O Father who is in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our bread for tomorrow. Refresh our souls with the water of life, and forgive us every one our debts, as we also have forgiven our debtors. Save us in temptation, deliver us from evil, and increasingly make us perfect like yourself. It is not strange that the apostles desired Jesus to teach them a model prayer for believers. John the Baptist had taught his followers several prayers. All great teachers had formulated prayers for their pupils. The religious teachers of the Jews had some 25 or 30 set prayers, which they recited in the synagogues and even on the street corners. Jesus was particularly averse to praying in public. Up to this time, the twelve had heard him pray only a few times. They observed him spending entire nights at prayer or worship, and they were very curious to know the manner or form of his petitions. They were really hard-pressed to know what to answer the multitudes when they asked to be taught how to pray as John had taught his disciples. Jesus taught the twelve always to pray in secret, to go off by themselves amidst the quiet surroundings of nature, or to go in their rooms and shut the door when they engaged in prayer. After Jesus' death and ascension to the Father, it became the practice of many believers to finish the so-called Lord's Prayer by the addition of, In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Still a little later on, two lines were lost in copying, and there was added to this prayer an extra clause reading, For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forevermore. Jesus gave the apostles the prayer in collective form as they had prayed it in the Nazareth home. He never taught a formal personal prayer, only group, family, or social petitions, and he never volunteered to do that. Jesus taught that effective prayer must be, one, unselfish, not alone for oneself, two, believing according to faith, three, sincere, honest of heart, four, intelligent according to light, and five, trustful in submission to the Father's all-wise will. When Jesus spent whole nights on the mountain in prayer, it was mainly for his disciples, particularly for the twelve. The Master prayed very little for himself, although he engaged in much worship of the nature of understanding communion with his paradise Father.